Today we're going to do a deep dive into the complex world of body positivity, because just recently it reared its ugly head once again. People have been screeching about fat phobia for years, and I think we need a framework so we can properly understand why people are still talking about fat phobia. It's the year 2014, Big Red just made her first debut on the internet, and the concept of the anti-feminist has yet to truly take form. The Huffington Post publishes an article to generate a conversation about the misconceptions surrounding fat people and this new topic, fat phobia. This quote was one of few from this time. People didn't really take fat phobia seriously. Libs didn't even take this seriously. You have to remember, the concept of more than one gender was new during this time too. But this article is a lot more interesting than that, because this article was the baseline for what people consider fat phobia is today. Despite the fact there's more women over size 12 than not, clothing retailers refuse to cater to plus sizes. And there it is. This was the beginning. Women who are full-figured, large, plus size, are the real women, and clothing stores, airports, and doors should cater to their size. This is such a toxic way of looking at life, don't you think? These girls should just be truthful with themselves and face the facts. But before that, let's see how this mindset has changed through the years. Everyday Feminism, during their height, published an article on fat phobia. This article was a true turning point because it was the first article to use the term skinny privilege. Skinny privilege is the various privileges girls who aren't full-figured have, many said privileges being associated with society. Skinny girls don't get called fat. Skinny girls are always pretty. The article mentions 22 different examples of thin privilege, with the intentions of convincing the reader that being fat isn't bad and that being skinny is the true abnormality. Almost all of the examples of thin privilege mentioned in the article revolve around two concepts, society and health. Skinny privilege to these people explains away any argument for responsibility, because why question my own choices when I can blame society and others for my issues? In 2015, The Guardian published an article about a small weight loss company and their advertisement. Are you beach body ready? The article goes on to applaud the UK government for banning the ad for health reasons, when in reality the ad was triggering towards feminist and fat phobia activists. The feminists hated the model for objectifying herself, and the fat activists hated the advertisement for encouraging health and weight loss and saying that weight loss is a positive thing. The ad features a black and white, curvy, fair skinned, fair haired woman in a bright yellow bikini. Her hair is long and lush, her lips full, and her waist tiny. Next to her is a simple question, are you beach body ready? The question is almost immediately followed by the introduction of the weight loss collection, as if to suggest you probably are not beach body ready, and that clearly the step to remedy that involves losing weight. Unless you believe body positivity activists who claim that Fatness has little to nothing to do with health. Celebrating obesity makes about as much sense as urging women with anorexia not to seek professional help and to just embrace their condition as body positivity. What are we doing instead? Lowering the bar for humanity by legitimizing this insane idea that celebrating beauty is dreadful because some whiny self-entitled gob of lard somewhere might have her precious feelings hurt. May 3rd, 2017. The Independent publishes an article about the Beach Body Ready advertisement and mentions some reactions against it. One being the new advertisement made by another company. This advertisement is made by a body positive company trying to promote their plus size clothing. We felt like not enough has changed since the original Protein World ad in 2015. It's been three years and things should have changed more than they have, so we wanted to take an opportunity to change them. We wanted to say without hesitation that there shouldn't be a black cloud hanging over your summer because you think you don't have the right kind of body. This disease is commonly prevalent in poor and female populations. The estimated annual healthcare cost of obesity-related illnesses is a staggering $190.2 billion, or nearly 21% of the annual medical spending in the United States. Childhood obesity alone is responsible for $14 billion in direct medical costs. Obesity is a risk factor for other diseases. Obesity by itself doesn't kill, but the heart disease that comes as a result will kill you. It's naive to assume that all people are attractive. Humans by nature look for positive physical traits in each other. Humans dislike extremes when it comes to finding a mate. Extremes in size, pigment, height, voice, etc. These traits can be extremes in both ways, extremely short or tall, extremely dark or light. 
being fat will almost never be something that an average person would find attractive. We dislike it because we do not want to be fat. The body positivity movement is cruel because it tricks girls into thinking that their being fat is something to appreciate, when in reality, it should be something to avoid. Now why is that the case? How come the body positivity movement is so detrimental to girls and women and not boys and men? Sexual value is strongly connected to the physical looks of men and women, but more so women, because traditionally and naturally, women don't have a lot to give to a relationship to a man. Men can be unattractive, but still find a partner because he's smart, strong, and a provider. I don't expect these roles to be fulfilled by a woman. I expect a woman to be beautiful, caring, and empathetic. Though these roles are considered archaic now, they still hold true. Women who maintain successful careers usually don't have children or lack meaningful connections with their partners. Hi, my name is Lauren. I am 25 years old and I am a journalism graduate. I'm not beholden to any little monsters running around the house. I'm not beholden to some man who's gonna be mansplaining at me and talking down at me. When will modern women learn that being like a man and not caring about your body won't make you happy? It'll only make your life worse.